Hi, hello everyone, and uh, welcome to uh, today's online session. Uh, so we waited a, a few minutes uh, to make sure that everybody was able to join us today. So I'm Nicola, so uh, you will just see and hear me for a few minutes, don't worry. Uh, it's, today is all about learning more about Sigfox in Russia. So you may have heard about the news of Sigfox expanding in Russia this year. So Jan, uh, Jan Straub, who is the co-founder and CTO of Sigfox Russia, will tell you more about uh, who they are, what are their plans, and how you can work with them right now to address the uh, Russian market with your existing or future IoT solutions. And then Anlor Souffle, who is in charge of our partner enablement at Sigfox, will uh, tell you more about the fast track uh, process that we are creating to help companies uh, big or small, to quickly uh, address the Russian market and the RC7 new uh, certification class. So that's it for me. I would just uh, launch a short poll to make sure that uh, you tell us what are your current uh, view on the Russian market. So that could, why are you joining us today? And I will leave the floor to uh, Jan in a, in a few seconds. OK. So at the end of uh, this presentation, which will be roughly 30 minutes, maybe a bit more uh, long, uh, we'll have a Q&A session to make sure that we address your questions. So to do so, please use the questions uh, panel in the GoToWebinar tool. Uh, ask them along the way. Um, we'll go through them at the end of the presentation. So that's really the interesting part, is making sure you have this interaction and you're able to directly ask your questions uh, about the way to collaborate uh, tomorrow uh, in Russia. So thank you again for joining us today. Um, and by the way, uh, make sure you uh, check out the webinar calendar on Sigfox website. We have a few more sessions scheduled for this month, uh, focused for one on uh, Sigfox and blockchain use cases, which will be the session of next week. And later in May, we'll have a session with a company called Cartesian, about uh, artificial intelligence and basically how to have AI on the edge before sending the message over the Sigfox network. But again, today is all about Russia. So no, now I will let the floor to Jan. Hello, everybody. I'm waiting. Can I share my screen? Yes, Jan, uh, you should be able to uh, share your screen right now. It's not working. One second. Well, can you see it now? Yes, perfect. Fantastic. So, hello, everybody. My name is Jan Straub, and thank you very much, Sigfox, for this opportunity. Uh, the goal of today's webinar is to speak, I would say, about RC7. And I want that for all of you, this is not going to be any rude words, but it's going to be synonym of simplicity. It's going to be synonym of more business. And uh, I would say a lot of new adventures we are going to make together to extend the Sigfox uh, ecosystem all over the world. So in order uh, to discuss and to explain you more about it, I would like first to introduce a little bit about us, who we are, who is this company called Sigfox Russia? Then about the market opportunities. What is the Russian market in terms of IoT, in terms of LP1s? What are already the solutions supporting, I would say, uh, the RC7? So how you can do it, how you could adapt your solutions. Sigfox will go more on the certification pass. And uh, also a big topic, which is, I would say, very important, is what are localization, what are legal, legal, uh, uh, legal topics in Russia? And after, last but not least, how we as a company want to support you and are going to support you to, to, to touch this new market. So who we are? So we are a company that was founded by two Russian French guys, uh, Eric uh, Brisset, who was a, man a general manager in a solution business for more than 15 years, and myself, who has been working mostly on business transformation and digital. And we have built a company uh, which are covering, which is covering today more than more than three countries. So we are operators in Russia, but not only. We are also operators in Lithuania and Latvia. And today we have a team of technical people, salespeople, uh, uh, who are helping us 
uh, to make this adventure become true. And you have on the screen all the different people, and we have even, I would say, our French Russian guy with uh, Sergey with a Sigfox head and who is sitting with us, uh, and is, which is really part of this new adventure. So, how we are working? So, I told you we are operators in three countries, which are Russia and uh, Lithuania and Latvia, but we have also a presence in Europe. So, why is this? It's very simple. Uh, what we have understood from the last, I would say, our last life in terms of selling solutions, making transformation, it's always better to have people near the headquarters of the customers and to have people on the local field. And that's why we have two people, Ivan in Paris and Guillaume in Italy, who are helping us to make those projects live and more efficient. So uh, what about the market? Uh, the market in Russia in terms of connectivity is quite huge. So I'm showing on the slides uh, what are the official figures of uh, Russian statistics in terms of industrial connectivity and to m connectivity, which means that in this uh, screen you have cable connectivity, you have wire, um, wireless connectivities, which are and the way uh, they are going to grow in the coming year. So what I would say figures like figures, what I would like to remember is that number of connection in the next two years is going to double. And if we speak about LP1 technologies, which is where we at PicFox are working, we speak more or less about uh, within the next five to 10 years, around 1 billion uh, available connections uh, to, uh, to be covered. So this is what is Russia in terms of possibilities. If we speak about push and why is it so important, why it's going to be fast, we have also to understand that LP1 uh, connections, this is part of the digital transformation plan in Russia. So Russia has put, is part of its uh, digital development roadmap, LP1 as one of the strategies to develop new operators, to develop new technologies, and to have uh, international company capable of managing end-to-end -end, uh, solutions uh, which are going to, 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 to trigger uh, worldwide and work worldwide. And after, it's not only growing in terms of, I would say, connections, but we are also growing in terms of money, and uh, the market is more than doubling also in terms of money. So globally, if you remember, uh, I would say two things. Russia is a fast-growing market, more than 20% per year, and it's a, we have a big push from the government, which means that things are going to happen. And in terms of total PAM, or total accessible market, let's remember 1 billion. Plus, minus, we don't care. It's just 1 billion connection. It means 1 billion device will have to be produced one way or the other to cover the needs. If we speak now in terms of uh, market and verticals, uh, we, we have put on these slides a high level estimation about what could be by 2025 the total accessible market in terms of LP1 connections by vertical. So, first block which is very big, it's what we will call tracking and logistics plus industrial application. So it's more than 300 million devices, needs for devices and connectivity. Then we have two big topics, which are more smart metering and oil and gas. They are quite big, but we know all that these are quite tricky topics. And for those, I would say the approach is more to work with local device makers who, who are already in the market to adapt their product. Then I would say we, as a focus as a company, we focus also on retail business because Russia is quite a big, a big country in terms of retail. We focus about security insurance and we focus also about what we will call smart offices, smart building. And I think with the COVID, this is kind of the topic that is going to be to grow even faster than what we are expecting. For all the other topics, we decided to work not directly with the end customers, but to use either local integrators or to use what I told the local ecosystem of device makers who are totally able to work in this complex uh, ecosystem. So uh, totally, we for us, uh, in this 1 billion connections, we are pushing uh, like hell with our own cell sim on the four first uh, segments, which are industry, retail, security, and smart building. For all the other one is going to be a more 
free, uh, uh, free push. But again, for you, you see the opportunity where you are, where you can go, and I'm sure that there is place for everybody. If you speak about the battlefield, okay, no network country means that there needs to be a coverage. Okay, so first good news, uh, I would uh, be happy to say that we have already 300 base stations uh, that came yesterday in Moscow. So the deployment is fully ready to start. We don't speak only about slides. Uh, and what are we going to cover in the coming months? First thing, I would say our first targets is Moscow and St. Petersburg. So these are the big uh, topics that we are going to cover before the end of the summer. Then we are going to extend to city with more than 1 million inhabitants, uh, which are St. Petersburg, Samara, Kazan. So by end of the year, I would say we will have covered the two main cities plus uh, a few uh, cities with more than 1 million inhabitants uh, um, in Russia. But we all understand Russia is big and customers are never where you expect. So that's why, and this is important to highlight today, we have what we call a customer approach, which means that if for your project, you need to cover an area which is not, I would say, considered as a first priority in the deployment plan, just contact us and we will change the plan because this is really important and we have planned in, and we have, I would say, added this flexibility to ensure that 10% of the base stations that are deployed are reserved to this kind of coverage in order to ensure for all of us to be able to enter to the customer needs and show is satisfied with it. And how we ensure this? We have signed a frame contract with uh, most of the telecom operators to use with, with a very good price uh, the, their telecom and their mass infrastructure all over Russia. So this is allowing us to ensure that we are able to provide you this flexibility not independently of where you are. So after we have said there is a country we want to cover, but what about the customers? So a lot of Sigfox customers are already in Russia. So it means that if you have solutions there, just push. It will be, uh, it will be easy. If you need, uh, and if you need any help, don't hesitate to ask us. We can support you on the sales locally. We can support you with our uh, filial uh, in Paris with Ivan or uh, Guillaume more near to the, the headquarters to convince that Russia is safe. So don't hesitate. And uh, those customers, they are just waiting for you to come and to, to copy past what they did and we will make it happen. What about our challenges? So first of all, I would say, we are not the first one in this market. Uh, we have Laura on one side, which is quite active. We have two Russian, uh, I would say, competitors, which are using uh, UNB technology, which are called Strij and YVIOT, so very similar cases. And we have a lot of push, push from NBIOT for the local operators, but this we all know. So for me, this is quite good news because it means if you have such a competitive market, it means that there is a market. So it means that there is a lot of opportunity we can use and we can show them to all those competitors that we are better. And we are better because we work as an ecosystem and we work a, as a team. Second important topic, and uh, here we ensure that we communicate enough that we have a lot of changes in the le legislation. They, they, they are in two directions. First is to make, I would say, a better management of the frequency. And one of the, on, one of the results is that we have not RC1 in Russia, but we have RC7, slightly different, that we will be required to localize part of the infrastructure, base station and the cloud. And we will be required to, to have specific IoT licenses, but all this is allowing to have a market that will be at the end much more dynamic and will ensure uh, a quality for all the customer of, um, of, the, of the using, I would say, our, our solution. So, Russian market is really dynamic, pushed by the government. We push as much as possible to have a coverage as large as possible and to be flexible because we couldn't cover in one, in one click the full territory. So let's use it and make the business happen. Uh, and uh, when we speak also about data, uh, this is more as an information. By the end of 2020, we will be the first, I would say, country to have 
data localized in a country. So by the end of the year, we will have uh, the da Sigfox data reg regarding Sigfox uh, customers that is going to be localized in Russia. And the base station production is going to be localized by next year. So uh, this is part of one of the challenges we have to solve this year. And also, uh, in the coming years, we'll have also to look uh, to localize part of the solution in the uh, ecosystem in Russia, uh, because they would like to have their local product. So this could be also an opportunity, I would say, to look as Russia uh, like the second China, because we have very aggressive costs for a lot of solutions. And we have a lot of we have some companies that are already uh, for other technology supplying uh, Europe from Russia because they have the I would say uh, very cheap cost in terms of production. So it's a good quality, uh, cheap cost. So this could be also opportunity for the coming years uh, to develop I would say a new supply chain of uh, solution. What about RC7? So we understand now about the business. Now let's speak a little bit more technically about uh, what is RC7. So uh, it's not rude. RC7 is kind of a little brother of the RC1. As you saw on this slide, uh, it's just a little bit in between the RT1. So it is indeed so close that we have to understand that to do RC7, there is no hardware impact at all. Radio will be the same, uh, setup will be the same. I would say you won't have any impacts. And Sigfox will confirm you with the proposal they are going to make after. So it means more or less. To do RC7 is just a firmware change, an update of some comments. So, and we have already a lot of good things that happened during the last months. I would say that most of the chip makers have done either a release note or almost certified their product with the RC7 for their design, their standard design, and so on. And we have also some module makers that have already adopted, who have shown that they are ready to move. Uh, will it be Wisel, who are going to create a new product, by the way, uh, which is going to help us to be much more flexible, which is a new module, which will be RC1, RC6, and RC7 certified, which will avoid to have one part number per, uh, I would say, per frequency. So this is a good news. And uh, this is going to be released soon. We have HTMicron, who have provided the first, I would say, RC7 Monarch certified solution. So it's a, a new module produced by a, a Brazilian company. And we have also for telecom design some workaround that allows the module to move to, to RC7. So it means that we have already uh, companies that are embracing, uh, I would say, this new legislation. And this was possible quite easily. Uh, and again, if your product is missing here, we would be happy to add it because this list is just growing every day. And we see more and more uh, company willing to join this adventure. So next, what is important? So we understand uh, we have the market. We have, I would say, the way to do it. And I would say, uh, third topic, in order not to spend money for nothing, our rule in, in Sigfox Russia is the following one. We always have to do business first, and then we do the paperwork. So. Let's open some contract, sign with the customers, and then after only go for certification. And Sigfox will show you how to ensure we do it. So our rule is let's do business first in order to fulfill this market, not less our competitors go in, and after ensure that the paperwork is making the quality and make it work. So what are the opportunities you have in Russia? So I told you uh, Russia is a high-tech country. So in Russia, uh, this is more for you to understand what could be the opportunity to work together is you have a lot of international design house. So these are companies that are having uh, international contracts and doing design. Uh, we are starting to work with them for them to do already first Sigfox, uh, I would say, adaptation. So, but you have international company locally capable to design Sigfox product with a very low price. Then we have what we will call uh, international class EMS that are able to build uh, devices, base station, and then can localize the product for you. So uh, this is also existing. If we speak about platforms, 
uh, we have, I would say, also our own, I would say, world of IoT platforms. And we have two, I would say, the first one, we will call it the Russian Google, who is called Yandex, who is delivering an IoT platform. We have Mail.ru, I would say it's uh, a little bit uh, the Russian Yahoo, more or less, uh, if we speak uh, about what is closed. And we have also specialized platforms uh, which are providing on working on the international market, uh, more generic like Thibaut, Tarantul, or Cifra, who, which are international platforms, uh, which are, uh, I would say, uh, capable of managing complex IT projects. And we have also big integrators uh, who are, I would say, already starting to work with Sigfox, which are part of them, uh, uh, developers of uh, uh, PTC platforms, but we have also having their own platforms like Kaspersky and Vision, which is a filial of uh, a big telecom group called MTS, Satel in the construction world. So we have also an ecosystem of companies, international level, ready to support us and make what I will call for your solutions, the last mile support for the customers to ensure that they have the right level of support in the right language, making the life easier. So in all this, it would be, I would say, easy, but uh, we also want to support you. So first thing, if you want to import your device, just contact us and we will help you managing all the import procedures. We will help you finding the right distributors if needed, or we can be your distributors depending on our agreement. We have an open communication. So our rules is not to, I would say, to manage everything by ourselves because uh, we cannot. So our rules is partner first. You are the expert. We are here to make for you the right infrastructure that will support you for your business. And uh, important, I repeat it, is that we are here really to build the bridge because Russia, Europe, Russia, US, Russia, Asia, uh, Russia, uh, Middle East, all these are countries with similar uh, culture, but it's a little different. And we are really, uh, we would be really ha uh, happy to help you and manage, I would say, this cultural difference in order to make the project happen. And we provide, I would say, kind uh, three times, three kind of channels for your solutions. First one, as I told, we can be your distributors. So it's shortest solutions. We push with our sales force to ensure that our network is fulfilled and to have a big pipe. Then we could be, we could help your customers by sourcing a project, or we could help last could be an engineering project after a POC if the customer needs a specific solution. So we are working, providing device and solutions using the, those three, three points. So as a conclusion, uh, I would say Russia is a big market with opportunity. RC7, it's only code change, no hardware change. And if you need any helps, just contact us and we will make it happen for the future. Thank you very much for the attention. And now let uh, uh, Alnor describe much more what is this famous uh, certification discount that Sigfox is proposing now to help you to go for RC7. Thanks a lot, uh, Jan. I will now hand over the presenting mode to Alnor. I'm sure she's going to be very happy to elaborate on the don't worry about certification part. And, and Laura, you should be able now to share your own screen. And by the way, to all attendees, uh, you keep you can keep on asking your question using the questions panel. I already have a couple that we'll uh, address at the end of the session. But you have any questions specific on the Russian market, deployment plans, uh, verticals to address, uh, partnerships, approaches with TikTok Russia, please use the question panel so we can uh, address them at the end of the session. So and Laura, the floor is yours. Uh, just for information, you may want to start the slideshow because we see all your slides in PowerPoint right now, not only the current one. Yes, that's perfect. And here you are. Hello, uh, do you see it now? Yes, oh. screen is perfect, sound is perfect. Perfect. So, hello everyone. I'm really happy to be here to talk with uh, Energo Capital and Yan, especially. Uh, my goal here is to show you how RC7 is similar to RC1 
and what we propose at Sigfox level to support you on switching your RC1 module or devices to RC7. So first, uh, I will go back to what Jan presented you before, like how RC7 is technically very similar to RC1. So the main two changes are slightly different changes, if I may say it like that, are the uplink, uplink center frequencies and downlink center frequencies, which goes from 868.1 in RC1 to 868.8 in RC7, which is very closed. And for downlink, 869.5 to 869.1. So they are very, very closed. Uh, all the other parameters we have in Sigfox for the radio are similar, are unchanged, so exactly the same the uplink data rate, the downlink data rate, even the Sigfox recommended output power, which is in EIRP TBN16 or 14 ERP, and the duty cycle as well. So you have more information about this specific duty cycle on build.sigfox.com if you want to have further uh, information. So as I said, it is technically very closed. So what we have already done is providing a way for you to switch your RC1 device to RC7. So first, there were first modification we can be done if you have access to the source code, so meaning Sigfox API. For example, ST has done this modification and provide the example. Or um, you can as well use the AT command system on the module from Sanji, which was the Wiser module, and uh, the chip of Ansemi, the AXSFEU. So um, I will go into the detail quickly. So for the source code modification, uh, you need to open the Sigfox API.h and change, um, just you duplicate the so RC1 part and you create your new RC7. So it's exactly the same. I have attached a picture of the extract of the code here. And so you see you only need to change the center frequencies for downlink and uplink, and then everything else, it's exactly the same. So you just redefine the name of them. Uh, and then you need to make sure on the Sigfox API open um, function, that the RC is given, um, the RC7 is given. But this is a small trick and you, you don't change anything else and it will work. So the only thing I need to tell you is that it will not work for Monarch because this requires the lightest library. I put dot point eight point zero, but it's now dot point eight point one. Um, then the AT common modification, so only applicable for the WISEL module and the Ansemi chip. Uh, you only need to send the two AT command, changing the downlink and the uplink frequencies. So um, super easy. And you will find an example of this uh, on the GitHub project. So we have. Uh, it's using as well the S and E with a SDR dongle um, tool. So yes, once you have had uh, your change made, of course, most of the time you want to check if it actually works. And so um, to let you know, SDR dongle plus the RSA tool is compatible with RC7 on the version which had been updated in November 2019. And, uh, sorry, and uh, you can uh, view and visualize uh, that if you're modifying your source code, it's sending properly on the Sigfox network, all the frequencies and everything to pass your verified test. 
uh, this is you can download it on build the new RSA tool. Uh, I can change. Okay. Uh, the on the SNE, so Sigfox Network Emulator, you can as well test the RC7. So you need to uh, set the following parameter, changing the uplink center frequency and downlink center frequency as well. And so you will be able to recreate your end-to-end -end solution from the device, your device set with RC7 up to your application because on the SNE you can set the callbacks to your final platform. So very useful. And don't I just put here that don't forget that SNE works with a public key. And to switch back to the global network, you need to switch back to your private key as a reminder. And then the big topic, which is a certification. And don't worry, it's very easy. So on the first step, I have shown you that you can modify your actual software, embedded software, to convert your RC1 device to an RC7 device. So for that, you can test and register all your devices as prototypes on the Sigfox backend, and they will inheritate the M certificate of your devices. So for the RC1 M certificate. For example, you have a Wiesel module and you do the quick change with the AT command. You can register your devices as prototype on the backend and it will work. As well, if you have a discrete implementation, you do the same, the quick change, and it will work as well if you register them as prototype and they will inheritate on your previous M certificate. Second step, um, now you want to go for real certification. So if you are a device maker with devices based on a module, you and if your module maker certifies this device are with R7 compatibility, you can just contact Sigfox and ask them to upgrade, ask us to upgrade your certificate. So your product certificate will be upgraded for free. So we will do this until the end of 2020. If you are have a discrete implementation and you are going for the verified test, what we offer you, if you take the new library, so 2.8.1, you do an upgrade of your existing library and of your existing embedded software. And so you just need to go in a test house to apply for the RF and protocol test for RC7. So only RC7, not RC1 or all the other RC you have previously done. So, and we will review uh, your report and then we will upgrade as well for free your, uh, your uh, modem certificate, basically. And then you will be able to go for the product certificate for free as well. So remember, for to convert an RC1 or everything RC1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 module to RC7, you only need to go for the test house and the RF and protocol test and everything on Sigfox side is for free. So the, this offer is until end of 2020. I hope I was um, clear and don't hesitate to ask questions. I am done with uh, my part. Thank you, Anne-Laure. Uh, very clear indeed. Uh, thanks a lot for those details. And I'm sure everybody is happy to know and to hear the word uh, free uh, certification and prototype, easy prototype mode. So not only was, the, was it clear, but it was, I assume, good news for solution makers and our customers. So okay. now I will go over the questions. We have quite a lot of them, but you can keep on ask the, asking them uh, quickly. Uh, Subendu was asking about the uh, LoRaWAN technology competition in Russia 
but it, that was before uh, Jan went over the competition uh, landscape. So I think we can assume that uh, you this was answered already. So Bandu, feel free, uh, send me another message if you have a specific point you want Jan to address on that. Um, then we have uh, yeah quite a few questions, Jan, regarding uh, coverage. Uh, as we also on the map, Russia is not a small European country, small European country, sorry, so which comes with a lot of uh, coverage concerns. And we have Andrea who is asking, Andrea has two questions, by the way, and I th think you have a specific use case in mind. Uh, Badikli is asking if you have plans to cover the Kemerovo, Kemerovo, I don't know how to say it, area in Russia. And he was also asking if in your market landscape, tracking and so forth, you were including mining. So I'm assuming uh, Andrea is asking about Kemerovo coverage as he has uh, ideas of use cases in the mining industry there. So Yana, I don't know if you can answer about plans for Kemerovo or how, how you plan to address uh, coverage and extensions for those, ki those kind of uh, use cases. We cannot hear you, Jan. Mm -hmm. And here it okay, is. Great. Okay, so can you hear me now? So very good yes. question indeed, because it's illustrating what I told uh, previously that we have, I would say, our main uh, deployment roadmap, and Kemerovo is not part of it, but it's live. So what we propose is, as I told, uh, is that we have more than 10% of our stock of base station, which is going to be customer uh, oriented. And this is exactly a case where we will, uh, if you contact me, uh, we will try to make the coverage happen. So it's, uh, Kemerevo is really about mining. So if there is a case, uh, I would be more than happy to, to put a base station there to cover this customer. Because... Uh, at the end, there would be a lot of other opportunities building on it. So please contact me and we will make it happen. Okay, so Andrea, let's take that, let's take that offline. And I'm sure Jan will be very happy to help you if you have promising business in the Kimerovo industry, uh, Kimerovo area, sorry. And other questions still about coverage. So you are mentioning, uh, Jan, that you have a, a stock of uh, access stations that you want to use for customer spot deployments. Uh, do you have a plan as well to uh, use a micro access station that customers could buy and install themselves on their own sites? Yes, yes. So concerning the micro base station, so the, the plan is to be ready to allow them for sales starting from Q3 this year. So the topic is certification, which is still ongoing. But uh, starting from Q3, uh, import of micro base station will be totally legal in Russia and we'll be able to allow, the, allow them for sales. So micro will be fully allowed. And I think it's a good thing to allow anybody to buy, to make their own coverage because at the end it builds a much better global coverage. So uh, yes, will be allowed. And uh, Q3, we will be able to, uh, to support you with those topics. Before, contact me by mail and we'll see how we can manage. Okay. Thank you. So I think you already answered the next question, which was from Klaus, which he was asking if uh, an access station micro RC1 would work in Russia. So RC1, no, but you should be able hardware-wise to configure it to RC7. Oh, but as easier. Jan said, you, sti it's, it's you much still easier have uh, issues about uh, regulation. Yeah, no. So I would say um, um, any base station, you just plug it uh, to the Russian backend and it's RC7 automatically. So nothing to be done if it was an RC1. You bring it to Russia and it will be an RC7. So from your side, nothing to worry about. The same hardware is working. Uh, everything is working the same. Uh, it's just us who are making the uh, setup. Uh, it's one minute. OK, perfect. So Klaus, I think you have uh, your answer. It should be pretty easy to, uh, to use uh, your, your micro station in Russia in the near future, as soon as you are able to uh, travel there, of course. Uh, that, 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 sorry, I'm going through the questions as they are. Oof, a tougher one, maybe. That's for you again, Jan. Uh, Ines is asking if you can elaborate more on the governmental plan 
and vision on IoT. You were mentioning there was a big governmental push. So is there a special focus on LPWAM uh, in that uh, governmental vision? Yes, so it's, uh, thank you Ines for the question. So yes, uh, there is a full, I would say, uh, in, there is a Russian, I would say, I will call it Russian roadmap for digitalization. It's like a five uh, quinquennial plan, uh, a plan for five years. And there is a full block related to LP1 topics in this. One is about transportation, tracking. Uh, it's about uh, digital uh, in smart cities uh, where you have application. So if Ines, if you are interested, just contact me and I will provide you the details, uh, the high level details of this plan. Uh, what are the different parts? But part of it is about legislation, part of it is about business. And uh, the last part is about uh, ensuring a global coverage. And here also I would say the future uh, satellite solution from Sigfox would be a great plus for us because it will allow us to cover much more territories than any of the possible competitors. Uh, so we have a lot of things to do to prove and we are totally inside this, uh, this plan. So it's a fantastic news for us. Okay, great. Um, and Laure, don't worry, I have questions coming your way as well, but uh, I'll go over the last one for Jan, which was an interesting one, maybe a tricky one. Uh, regarding ecosystem. So Vinod is asking, uh, you mentioned that you're building an ecosystem including locally produced devices, so Russian made, but does this mean that you will not be open to import, to importing devices made in other countries? Uh, very good question. So uh, I would say, it, uh, I would try to answer the following one. We are totally open to use the best solution available. So this is the first answer i would say an ecosystem strength is by the number of participants but as russia is pushing for local production we are working in two ways first one is uh, i would say to have local companies which are going to implement the quality of the global ecosystem of sigfox so this is like what is happening in every country and after we are also working and for good solutions which are having an, a big volume we are looking for, uh, I would say, to have part of this being produced, uh, like a license, for example, uh, in Russia. So again, we say business first, legislation after. This means that it means it needs to have an advantage in terms of business, in terms of volume, in terms of revenue. And we are uh, going to help, I would say, the global, global ecosystem, if there is a need like this, to support them in this, uh, in this work. Uh, because this will make more, more connection for us, more money for the ecosystem because their solution will be uh, mostly adopted in Russia. And uh, I would say uh, more money for the Russian government because uh, there is more taxes collected on the local ground. So it's a win-win for everybody, but it should be done as a win-win. Uh, so if it's just to put a checkbox and we make production, I don't think it makes sense. So uh, yes, we push for it uh, and we support the import also uh, with all the paper flow. Uh, because uh, it needs to be done, but uh, let's have it. Let's see if you have a case we support. We, we build the business case and we make it happen. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I have no more Russian specific questions right now. Not at least not uh, directed to you, um, Jan. If you have questions, you can still send them uh, in the question box, by the way. Uh, anne -Laure, your turn. I have a first question which regards uh, radio performance. So you explain how we could uh, basically uh, tweak uh, RC1 uh, module, so be it a ST solution, a Weisel Seong module, toward the RC7 frequencies. But do any of these changes have an adverse effect on the radio performance of the device? Will it work as well when doing that? Or is that a quick fix? A not perfect but quick fix before having the perfect uh, RC7 solution. What's your view on that? Uh, so for now, uh, based on what we have tested, it working perfectly. It is working perfectly. Um, but I really want uh, you to, even if it, it works perfectly, we want you for certification to add the last latest library because this is the one where it's properly implemented. Okay, thank you. 
And da, da, da. Uh, another question for you and Laure. Uh, Adrien uh, is asking about uh, uh, an estimated date of release for uh, the Monarch update, the Monarch availability for RC7. You mentioned on one of your on one uh, of your slides that uh, device makers needed to make sure they had a specific version of Monarch. So is RC7 fully available? Is, is Monarch fully available for RC7 today, or will it happen soon? And in that case, when? Yeah, so it is. It is embedded in the 2.8.0 library, and HTMicron, as Jan said, has already implemented it. So it's working. Great. Okay. Uh, so thanks a lot, Adrien. I think you have your answer. No more excuse for you uh, to uh, delay your developments. Everything should be uh, possible uh, very quickly. And Vinod is asking, so elaborating on that part of it, uh, what are today's the all the module manufacturers who have RC7 available? So a part of Seongji, Seongji Weisel that we mentioned. Uh, so you mentioned H HT Micron, Weisel, and ST. That's that's all of them, or that's just a few examples. Um. So I think a lot of the uh, module maker are working as well on it. And there is Lighton, for example. Uh, the other, I can say it now, but it will be soon available because we're working with all the ecosystem to make it happen fast. OK. Thank you. Uh, I'm going over the, all the questions to make sure I don't miss anything. I have several people uh, thanking uh, both of you for the quality of the presentation and the information you were able to share. So thanks uh, to you to, uh, for taking the time to things. Thank you. It's always appreciated. And I think we went over all the questions. So the, that's great. Perfect. Uh, Jan, I will uh, maybe let you share your screen so if you want to have a few closing words let me switch to the proper menu and here it is you so can now me... share your screen uh, let me check i have an issue with screen sharing oh no sorry i made a mistake Yes, exactly. And now you should be able. You see my screen? I gave it to the wrong. Uh, <laughs> not sorry. yet. Yes, it's loading. We've got the okay, same. Fantastic. Screen. Okay. So I would like to, my, as a final conclusion, uh, so we see that uh, we, we are working together with Sigfox to ensure that this move to RC1 to RC7 will be as easy as possible. So from the technical standpoint, uh, we, as Sigfox Russia, we are supporting you from, I would say, the business standpoint. So don't hesitate to contact us if you have any leads in order to make them happen. Uh, we support you from the coverage standpoint. So uh, we, we have to make it easy. And after, uh, I would say, it's, uh, let's do business and let's, let's fulfill Russia with millions uh, of uh, Sigfox connections so that none of the competitor is able to, to succeed and push their solution. So let's do it. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Jan. And thank you, all of you, for joining uh, today. Um, we will make sure we upload today's uh, recording on YouTube, so you're able to uh, watch it again if you like, or share it with your network if uh, you have a contact that can find it interesting. So as you know, we are running a regular webinar sessions on various topics. So next session, if you want to join us, are uh, May 20, where um, Axel will go over uh, blockchain use cases in the Sigfox world, taking an insurance use case as uh, an example. And then May 27, so two weeks from now, uh, we'll run a session with our, our partner Cartesium AI, um, which will tell you about their um, nano edge um, software solution basically um, helping you build 
uh, edge AI solutions for, uh, for IoT uh, deployments. And their solution is already pretty well proven in the predictive maintenance domain. So pretty interesting if you want to look into what can be done on the edge processing and making your sensors more smart and build uh, models based on actual behaviors instead of uh, purely expected situations. So th this is for the upcoming session. Uh, Jan and Anlor, uh, thanks a million for your time today. I think it was a very useful session. I know that a lot of people and a lot of companies are excited about the opportunities offered by uh, the expansion in Russia. Um, you were able to share a lot of information about coverage plans, short-term plans, and not plans for uh, three years from now, which is important. So short-term business plans, verticals to address, how to work together, how to make your certification easy and easier than sometimes. So thanks a lot. And to all the attendees, if you have any topic, any question that you want to address in private, uh, please do it. You can reach uh, Jan as his email, as you can see right now, or you can reach myself, uh, nicola.lesconnect at sigfox.com, or basically anyone uh, in your network of contacts within Sigfox and would be happy. Happy to help you and support uh, your, your success in Russia. Thanks, everyone, and see you soon for other sessions. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>